SpongeBob SquarePants is one of the most popular animated shows in history. It's brought joy to millions of children and adults around the world, and has a staple in popular culture today. I mean, why else would it still pop up so constantly in your Twitter feed? It's not only among the most popular cartoons in history, but it's also one of the most profitable. So you'd expect any giant media conglomerate to milk this franchise for every dime it's worth, and that's pretty much what happened here. The recent Spongebob spin-off Camp Coral has been met with a lot of negativity on the internet lately. Now I'm not going to delve into the Steven Hillenburg controversy, because there's already a ton of videos discussing that. And besides, I'd rather talk about the show itself instead of lamenting on what the creator wanted and what he didn't want. Despite popular belief that he never wanted the series to begin with, his collaborators have confirmed that he knew about the series being made before he sadly passed away. I say this now because there's been a ton of people downvoting the show and harassing artists working on it without even seeing it for themselves. Now does that mean I'm necessarily defending this show? Uh, yes and no I guess. I don't want people to make up their minds about this series without giving it a shot because it's a tad unfair to the crew working on it, but at the same time this isn't a show I would tell anyone to go out of their way to see. As its own thing, without the original cartoon in mind, I think it's alright, but I can't help but be bothered by its existence alone. Which begs the question, does this show need to exist? The quick answer is no. No it does not. And the reason for that is because the spin-off doesn't feel very different from the original show. The characters all feel the same and very little has changed about them except for the fact that they're all younger. What else makes this spin-off apparently different? The fact that they all go to summer camp? Yet a lot of the stories told here could be completely the same if the characters were older and in their original setting like before. Like there's this one episode where Spongebob, Patrick, and Sandy are trying to play tag, but since it's raining outside, they're trying to find someone else's house so they can, you know, play, continue their game. But the whole time I'm thinking, what is the point of this? Why is this a Camp Coral episode? You could just repurpose this for a Spongebob season 12 or 13 episode, and barely anything would change. Sure, they're in a summer camp setting and they're six years old here, but that's it. That doesn't make the writing necessarily bad or anything. I'd say the quality of it is about on par with Spongebob season 12 or 13, which makes sense because it has the same writing team behind it. But that's kind of the problem. It's essentially the same show from before. The characters' personalities are the same, the humor is the same, and so is the music. It's competently done, and it made me laugh a few times. Uh, hey, Mr. Tentacles, do you have a ranger badge? Well, I tried for it once. But this feels more like a marketing gimmick than an actual idea spawned from an artist. Stylistically, it's different, but that's only because it's in CG. I liked how they were able to recapture some of the cartoony nature of the original in 3D animation, but I still think it would have looked a lot better if it were hand-drawn. Another issue I had with the show was it seemed to ignore a lot of the continuity from the original. This isn't regarding how Spongebob met Sandy because the show definitely explained that in the biggest plot twist of the century. Come in, Big Cheeks. Over. Affirmative, Little Cheeks. This is Big Cheeks receiving you from the future. It's more things like Spongebob being the creator of the Krabby Patty, of all things. I thought there was a fry cook who worked at the Krusty Krab before him. I know that Spongebob as a show isn't very reliant on continuity at all. I mean, there's already two different versions of King Neptune, but it's aspects of the writing like this that just makes it a little more confusing to go along with. There's also other aspects of the writing that I just don't buy, like Mr. Krabs being a camp manager. I'm pretty sure he would be doing a job that would make him a lot more money than that. But the biggest gripe I have with this is not what I see a lot of people talk about, and that's the fact that most of the characters here are kids. Why is this such a big problem for me? because it takes away from the character of Spongebob. What made him initially stand out from the rest of Bikini Bottom was his childlike and adolescent behavior. Compared to his friends and neighbors, Spongebob embraced being a child to the max. Heck, the first movie was about him proving to everyone that he could carry responsibilities despite being called a kid. But now he's just a kid like almost everyone else here, so there's nothing that makes him stand out. Patrick and Sandy act just as immature as he does. You know those lame baby spin-offs we've had so many times in the past? Like Baby Looney Tunes, Baby Tom and Jerry, and a pup named Scooby-Doo? Think that, but for Spongebob. That's basically what this show is. Hell, the creator even said it himself. I'm not gonna act like this show is the worst thing ever, because at the end of the day, it's a lukewarm series that fails to add anything of substantial value to the franchise. You really don't need to support this unless you really want to see it, I guess. Support original Nicktoons like Glitch Text and Middlemost Post. 
Also, don't see the Patrick Star Show. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized. Thank you.